Hi, Amy at Fashion Toppings here on the floor of my very messy garage. <laughs> it's the only workable space right now. We're packed in here getting ready for another hurricane. And so I thought I'm gonna go ahead and start working. I got a china hutch for free and I'm gonna put it down in the guest house, but I want it to be rooster. You know, I love everything rooster. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing. That's one of my cabinet doors. And what I'm doing is I went on to graphicsfairy.com and printed out a rooster picture. Actually, I found it on Pinterest and then the link took me to Graphics Fairy. And what I did is I went onto a website called canva.com. I'll put the information down below. And you put your image in there. I pre-measured my cam cabinet door so I knew how big I wanted my picture to be. And it was 11 inches wide by 15 inches tall. So when you go into canva.com, you click on a button to customize your design, and then you put in your inches. So I put in 11 inches by 15 inches. It's already set for pixels, so you have to do a little down arrow to change it to inches, so that it already is gonna set your image to be the size that you want. Uh, and then you get to upload your picture. It also gives you the option to flip. Now you'll notice there's some French writing down here. It's actually in reverse. So you wanna make sure that if you have writing that you flip the image to make sure that, um, cause otherwise when you lay this down, you're gonna lay it face down, all your writing will be backwards. So you need to make sure that you flip your image. Um, I made that mistake. I went all the way to Kinko's cause you're gonna put it on a flash drive. You're gonna to run to your local Kinko's and then you're gonna have them print it off with their laser printer. Um, and they use a lot better quality paper. This is, I believe 24 pound paper. Um, so I gave him the flash drive, but I, I had gone all the way down there and my writing was backwards. So I had to go home, re-switch it and come back. They would have flipped it for me, but they were gonna charge me $7 to do that. So I drove home, flipped it myself and then went back. So this is the image. And now I did cut the image out so that I'm close to all the details. The less amount of paper I'm gonna have to remove during the image transfer, the better. So I cut close to the image. It's usually a big sheet of paper. This is what it looked like when I got it because I'm doing two doors. I had to get two prints, but so I cut as close as I could to the picture without actually cutting into the ink. Okay. So today I went to my local Annie Sloan provider uh, the store that I get my Annie Sloan paint from and they have artisan enhancements and I'm going to try their it's artisan enhancements um, by Aloha coatings their transfer gel. I'm gonna try this and I'm praying that this works because if it doesn't, then I gotta sand the doors down and start all over. So I already shook it up. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. And since I'm out here at night, you are gonna see some, some shadowing, I apologize, but um, once again, I only work at night out here. Okay, so I'm taking my picture. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a thin coat of the transfer gel right onto the cabinet door. Now you do need to make sure you remember which way is up for your cabinet door because you have two cabinet doors. My doorknob is right there. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just taking um, a regular paintbrush and I'm gonna put a thin coat of the transfer gel. It looks like um, white, it's, it's really runny. So I'm gonna put it on the entire surface just because I don't, I don't want a line where, you know, a little sheen or a line where there isn't transfer gel compared to where there is when it all dries. I just gotta pray that no dust gets in it tonight. So just put a thin coat on. Not too thin, you wanna make sure it feels wet and smooth. I gotta do it quickly before it dries. I have not waxed or sealed my chalk paint. I chalk painted in um, Annie Sloan's Pure White. I do plan on doing a clear wax and a dark wax over the entire cabinet, but I'm, and I got a hair in there already, dang it. It's already locked in. That's a rough thing by having dogs. You'll find hair everywhere. 
just making sure, I'm just feeling with my brush. I put a little bit more on it just to make sure that every place is wet and I'm not missing a place. You don't want too much because then it's going to have a hard time drawing. And it feels nice, nice and slippery. Okay, now I'm going to put one layer on the top of this. Okay, I just put a very thin layer on this. Now we need to put it face down. Line it up. I'm going to line up the bottom first. So I can get it where I want. Making sure it's centered. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. Laying it down, trying to get the bubbles out as I lay it down. We'll squeegee any extra bubbles out as we need to. Okay, now with me I've got a little squeegee little shower squeegee where I push the bubbles out. Most people use a credit card, but I didn't have a credit card that was, I'm using my fingers. I didn't have a credit card that was expired and I didn't really want my credit card number being on video. I had no gift cards because I throw them away once I use them. But if you have an old credit card um, or an old gift card or an old Starbucks card, that works best. But I didn't have any of them because I do the Starbucks app. So I don't have a card there. I don't need one. And just got to make sure anywhere that there's ink, you, you press it down and you got a nice seal. It's important to get the air bubbles out because if you don't, anywhere there's an air bubble, that ink will not stick. Okay, now that I got all the air bubbles out, I need to let this sit and dry and hopefully not get any more dog hairs in it. Um, you need to let it dry for 24 hours. Some people say two hours, but factory, I mean, if they recommend that you wait at least 24 hours. So don't touch it other than pushing bubbles out. Don't touch it for 24 hours and then we'll come back and I'll show you what step is next. Okay, this next step is kind of messy. I waited 24 hours, it's now <laughs> the, late the next night and I've already started doing this. Um, you just take a little bowl of water, you get your fingers wet and you start rolling the paper away from your print. You gotta be very gentle. I already did the other cabinet door just to see how it turned out and the other cabinet door, I'll show you in a minute, um, I experimented. I did not put um, the medium on the back of the picture and the cabinet. This one I did both, remember I did it, I, I put a layer on the cabinet and then I also put a layer on the picture before setting it down. And I can tell you this already, it works better to do it that way. The other one, since I've seen other YouTubers not put um, the transfer medium on the picture and the surface, um, I've seen a lot of them do that. So I wanted to try it out. Since this is a piece I'm not selling, I'm keeping it to put in our farmhouse. I wanted to experiment and see which works better or if it really made a difference. And I can tell you right now, just from what I'm doing now compared to what I did earlier, uh, this is gonna turn out much better. And I will show you the two side by side when I get done. But the other one took me almost two hours to roll the paper away. And so this is a long process. You just sit there and you can see how slow it is. And you just, you'll get all, it's, a, it's messy too. You're gonna get all these little wadded up bits of paper. But just keep wetting your fingers and in a circular motion, nice and gently, just keep rolling the paper off of it. And 
you can see see how dark this is the paper is coming off and this is where the paper is still on you're just going to keep rolling your fingers and you'll see it right here i'll, I'll work on the, P, the letter p keeping your fingers wet and just keep rolling i use a thick paper a 24 four pound paper so it does take it does take a little bit more work than just normal paper but you're gonna see just how long it takes just to reveal the letter P. You can tell when you have it all too, cause you'll have a, a clear little white haze over it. That means you still have paper on it. If you have it nice and shiny, you know, your print color, whether it's black or colored, when you have, when you can see the color, stop rubbing. Cause otherwise you will rub the actual ink right off. So be very gentle and just keep rolling the paper off as you can see, be very gentle. I did have some on the other cabinet door where some of the ink actually came off. So it was either because there wasn't enough to transfer gel, there was a bubble, um, or I just rubbed too hard, but I didn't think I was rubbing too hard. So as you can see, that's how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep on rubbing. Like I said, I'm not gonna film the whole thing, of the whole rubbing of the paper off because it did take two hours for me to do the other cabinet door and um, this will probably also take a good two hours so you will after you think you've gotten it all let it dry and if you start to see a little like hazing a little white film then just get your fingers wet and go to that spot and try to get that just means there's a little bit of paper left on there and it really shows up once it's dried. When it's wet, it's nice and, you know, colorful, but when it dries, it'll have a little white film on it. So you can tell when you've got all the paper up, but see this paper's thick. I can actually peel it, peel it off. See, see how nice and black this is? I got all the paper off. That right there, even though I, I tore that paper off, there's still a film, get my finger wet, there's still a film on it that'll keep getting darker and darker the more paper I get off. So just be very gentle, circular motions, brushing your little bits off as you go, and just do the entire picture. So I'm going to continue to do this, and I'll show you when I'm done. So here are the cabinet doors. I have them, uh, the paper is all removed and uh, there's a big difference between the two. And I am gonna go for a little bit of an age technique on my hutch. So I'm okay with some of the, you know, there's some areas that didn't transfer. But I, I prefer if they both would've turned out this way. <laughs> but that one didn't turn out as good and so now I'm gonna have to distress this one to look more shabby like that one let me show you now this one right here I only put the transfer medium on the cupboard and then put the picture directly on it and then press out all the bubbles this one I put the transfer medium on the cupboard door and also on the picture and it made a world of difference. I know I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on this and that's, you know, I kept on watching video after video after video, uh, just nervous to try this and then I decided just to jump in and just try it. But since, like I said, I'm keeping this for myself, I'm not selling it, I was willing to do a little experimenting for you and I wanted to show you the difference. Now from far away, they probably look the same. Now this one right here is the good one. Now you can see every part of the, the picture transferred and the picture itself I do have to tell you um, like you'll see some distressing down here the picture itself the image was already distressed they it had missing ink uh, and that's just the way because um, it's, it's just the way that it, it printed but this one came out beautiful like I said that is the transfer medium on the picture and also on the uh, cupboard door. 
Now this one over here, let me zoom in. Well, you can already see that little spot right there. And then there's a spot up by the rooster's head. Let me zoom in. Where there might not have been enough transfer medium on my cupboard, or I might have had an air bubble, I'm not sure. But you can see I have a big chunk of image missing there and a big chunk right there by the rooster's head. But everything else turned out pretty good. As you can see, it turned out pretty close to this one. But this one is just flawless. Okay, so a tip for you. If you're gonna do a photo transfer, one, use canva.com. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just that's a, that site made it so easy. I wanted you to learn from my experience, um, but that these are my new cupboard doors that are gonna be going on my hutch, and I will do another video showing you how I am going to give it an age technique. I'm scared to death um, because I painted these in Annie Sloan Pure White. Annie Sloan paint is not cheap, and I used quite a bit because I um, also experimented with, uh, with priming versus not priming. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, there's the top of the hutch, and then there's the bottom of the hutch. And I'll put in a before picture. Okay, the before picture, I did sand down the top so that I can stain it. And I stained it in the Jacoba bean. And I'll do after pictures and everything on my next video, not on this one, but because this is taking me a little while. But I, I stained the top in Jacoba bean, and then I jumped right in and started painting this in the Annie Sloan white. And I noticed that you know, because I did sand it down, and I didn't sand it down completely, I just took out, took off all the gloss, any gloss that was on it, you know, before, so that the paint would adhere. But I noticed, like, it took three coats, and I would get little tiny grain marks ever so often. So then I decided, you know, before, when I tackled this, that I was going to paint it with a primer first. So what I use for primer, this is what I use as a primer. I sprayed the entire cabinet down, or the top part of this cabinet down with this. And then I only had to do one coat of the Annie Sloan Pure White. Now without the primer, I had to take, I think I said it was like three coats um, to get the look that I got. And the one with the primer looks better even just with the one coat. So that saved quite a bit of money by priming it first. So I'm gonna start priming all of my projects. But I'm hoping the two are gonna match. But since I, primed I primed that one and painted that one it looks so much cleaner and then this one I don't know if you can tell side by side it's just not as white so because I did that I'm experimenting so I can learn um, I am going to do a gray wash I think over it or I'm going to do a dark wax um, just to kind of blend the two colors together so you can't tell that the whites are a little bit off I did paint the inside too. I took the glass out, but I painted the inside a vintage blue. So I can't wait to show you guys how this all turns out. I got this for free, and I'm going to put some beadboard on the uh, on the base underneath. So I have quite a bit more to do to this piece, but I'm doing it in my garage right now. And everything's crammed in here with all of our vehicles and everything because of uh, Tropical Storm Nate is coming in. And so I'm having to work in the garage. But I wanted to show you what I'm working on. And this piece um, is it's gonna be cute. It's gonna go down the farmhouse. But I just need to make it a little bit more rustic. But the doors will go right there. Those doors are gonna go right there. So, okay, well this is Amy with Fashion Toppings. Until next time, you have a great day.